We're on. We're on. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Um, we thought that we would do another Facebook Live on something that is like a perennial favorite, like when mm. we go back to all of our old podcasts or old articles and around the idea of practitioner um, development, marketing, your business, um, the thing that brought, gets brought up the most is. Mm -hmm. shh, shh, wait, it's not FOMO, it's FOPYAT. <laughs> We're creating a new acronym, it's called FOPYAT. Okay, you have to explain yeah, to it's our audience. Yeah, putting yourself out there. The fear of putting yourself out there, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So we, we should have a hashtag, <laughs> hashtag FOPYAT. Okay, right? yeah, we can start. It, it will go viral because it is so <laughs> pervasive. Yeah, especially uh, for people that are really working their own you know, business, the people that are entrepreneurs, the people that uh, need to be marketing to the world and not just doing mm -hmm. uh, like sales pitch one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a potential client. And um, yeah. I mean, this is really for people that have message yeah that have a service Absolutely. that truly makes such a huge and important difference and you want to say tell the world about it I and they're like ah, I, know. I can't I know I can't <laughs> getting behind a, a Facebook live yeah. is like my worst nightmare yeah right yeah it, it, it really is so um, this is uh, just a short video for a uh, live video for uh, the start kind of rolling out the new uh, EFT MBA, Marketing and Business Academy for EFT and Matrix Reimprinting re Practitioners. Uh, but this can, these lessons can apply for anyone. Absolutely. Um, one, so we do a lot of niche development with uh, in the MBA program, in the year-long program. Right. And um, We did a whole video of, on that. We did. One of, one of the one of the niches that I think is just still so, so, pardon the pun, untapped. I mean, it really is such a fabulous niche. Are those people that are struggling to put themselves out there in uh, multi-level marketing, network marketing? I think that's a fantastic niche because there again, like you have this product, you've used it, you're like, you drank the Kool-Aid, you're all gung-ho about it and you want to share it with the world and then you're freaking out because the last time I told someone about something like this, you know, I made them all these hundreds of dollars and they, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to get actually right to what are some of the things that people encounter yeah. and especially some of the decisions and beliefs yeah. that people create that, um, why they, why they have a challenge putting themselves sure. out and putting yourself out there could be anything. Right, it could be a video or an audio or writing a blog or giving a talk or, or publishing your or website. Publishing your website finally, or making a business card. Anything. Yeah. Anything. So anything that's letting people know, hey, I exist. Right. I help people. If you'd like to come to me, it's whatever it is for you. Right. So some of the ones is, of course, I'm not worthy. I don't deserve to I be don't successful. Deserve it. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Right. What about I can't ask. For support I can't ask for money I can't ask people to pay me that's not something you do it either happens or it doesn't but I'm not gonna ask because right? it could be because of I don't feel good enough right um, or I'm not enough of an expert yet I yes. don't have enough experience yet right you know when I when I hit 10 years then I'll have enough enough experience when I have my yeah. PhD when I have my whatever fill in the blank for whatever right, right? or I'm gonna fail you know I'm what? It's fail. free to test it. Or I'm going to shine and then what? Oh, I yeah. mean, there's so Definitely. many variations of this, right? Definitely. Uh, and it could also be your fear of being judged. That's a big one. Right? That's a big one. So I will put myself out there and people that know me are going to slam me or people I don't know are going to slam me, are going to shut me down, are going to be threatened, or going to try to take me down. Mm -hmm. um, and in the age of social media, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you can reach millions of people, and you could have trolls. You could have people that are writing stuff about you that, like, I had last week. That's like, what the heck was that? Um, oh, lies. you know what? So, so <laughs> I've seen the fears of people I don't know will judge or criticize me. Yeah. But equally as important as those I do know 
yeah. will see me and maybe they knew me before. Oh, and now and I'm doing this, ha- woo, this really woo out there stuff sure. and oh my God, they're just right. going to think I lost right. it. Like who is that other that we're worrying about? Right. Right? That's right. A, that's always a good one. So who's the other that we're worrying about that's going to criticize or judge us? Somebody from my past. Yeah. Somebody within my own profession. Yeah. What? Who am I yeah. to be doing a Facebook Live promoting my practice, right? Or, <laughs> right. Right? right? So all of those things can stop us, shut us down, yes. literally paralyze us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, so- there's, and there's the actual, you know, doing of it which is it, it you might struggle there it might you might feel the paralysis there of what do i do what buttons do i push and all of that and you underneath is the fear of shining that prevents you from actually moving forward mm-hmm. and so i like to say that um in a previous romantic relationship where things were not working out this well um my former partner was in the technology field And so we had a computer early on, you know, one of those giant ones with the dial up and all that stuff. And email was a new thing, like, oh, email, like I could send a message to someone. And um, and I said, can you, you know, can you help me like figure Mm -hmm. out the email? I I, I really don't know. Well, you didn't know how. Of course you'd ask. I asked. Well, I I got a good idea. Are you? Come on now. I've explained this to you 10 times, 10 times. And I can't right now. And, and I got such pushback that that shut me down. Sure. And you think people are still having technology shutdowns? Of course I don't know how to run live. I don't know how to email. What about an (laughs) autoresponder? Oh my God. Don't even talk. All of that. Yeah. So you know what I want to add on that? Fear of making a mistake and screwing up. And what if I just go blank in the middle live? (laughs) What if I don't, I don't know what to say. Right. So all of those come into your fear of putting yourself out there, Mm -hmm. fear shining that you've got to be perfect, perfect, either saying the right things or that you've got to have it memorized or, um, Big one, especially for women, is how they look. Mm-hmm. Like, <gasps> well, that goes under the fear of being seen. Yeah. So let's let's kind of like talk. Let's actually take that as a category: fear okay. of being seen. So go ahead and finish. One is the physical. One is absolutely right? the physical. Um, what about? Especially in the age of like everything polished and scrubbed and filtered on Instagram, right? Like I have to look perfect. Right. And the, the truth is that people don't want that because um, I think we're tired. Of, we're really, really tired of it. What we want is to see people that are authentic. Right. So fear of being seen could also be the fear that you're coming across as inauthentic. Oh, I was going to sell you a product. And that's just like, oh, I'm not going to be a right. salesperson. That is. I hear that all the time. Yeah. I hear, yeah. I don't want to be like a car salesman. Right. And nobody's asking you to be. Right? right. People actually want to see the authentic you. Right. And that. Could feel very vulnerable. Of course, it can. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. What about? Um, oh, this one I love. The fear of being seen as a hypocrite. Mm. Right. So, in other words, somehow I'm presenting myself, however, I'm putting myself out there, fit, well, healthy, and then somebody sees me smoking a cigarette, or somebody I don't smoke, but whatever that is, or I gained ten pounds, or I gained ten pounds, or yeah. I'm eating an ice cream sundae, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah is that now that I've been seen this way, if anybody sees me anything other than like that, they exactly. will just judge the yeah. heck out of me. Exactly. Right? All right, so um, those are all the fear of being seen. Then- well, there's a response. Actually, one other thing. There's like this heavy weight of responsibility that if I am that way and they see me that way, that I'm always going to have to be that way. That, uh, and there's a pressure to have to uh, stay that way, be seen that way, that become paralyzing as well. Right. So that's another big Yeah. So if you have any questions for us, we'd love to have you um, comment. Thanks for joining us. We've mm-hmm. got a bunch of people joining. Um, yeah. And today we're oh. talking about the fear of putting yourself out there, especially when it comes to your EFT or you know healing arts practice. Yep. So I got another one for you. Okay. Catastrophizing. Catastrophizing is a good one. That, it's a really good yeah, one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. How do so, you say that? So I, um, so, uh, I work with a client or a student in the MBA and we're asking, okay, what's the fear if you were to do step one? Step one is to just come up with a name for your business. And um, they're, they're, they're really terrified and afraid and, and they go to the most ex- like way out there, like I'm gonna be on Oprah 
and Oprah is going to ask me to name my business, and I am going to come up with a stupid name, and and every and so how many? So you haven't even launched your business. You don't even have a business card. You haven't seen. A, you've only seen a few clients, maybe. And here you are going to the worst extreme catastrophe. All this disaster is going to happen. Oh, you know, people are going to want. I'm going to be wildly successful, and then people are going to start asking me and wanting me for my money. Oh, for, yeah. For my time. Yeah. For my energy. I won't have any time to myself. <laughs> I won't have time for my family. Um, my privacy will be lost. Yeah. It's all of a sudden we went yeah. from naming your business to, oh my God, <laughs> right. that this is what's going to happen. Right. If I take that first yeah. step, yeah. I put my toe in the water, I'm going to drown. Right. That kind of like we get sucked into that. And the thing about, about having a business is you're going to get feedback from your clients and you need that feedback from the people that come and see a video or that come and you read an article or come to your site you need that to actually keep getting better sure so if you don't put yourself out there there's never going to be this um like constructive criticism that you can then choose to improve on like okay so i need to talk more about this or i this one this this article got you know a hundred views and this one only got two well i can see that my audience prefers this let me expand on that sure. and so you need to put out there initially to get that kind of feedback from the environment. To get the contrast of what they want to know and what they want to hear about yeah. and um, all of that's so important. You know, another one that I hear, and this is a smaller percentage, but when we were talking about catastrophizing, yes. sometimes I hear things like, if I put myself out there, yes. somebody once told me, if I put myself out there, my children get kidnapped. Or, yeah. Oh, or yeah. I will literally be killed. Somebody will be, I will be ostracized from my entire family. Yeah. I will, so, be, I will be killed. And so this is really fascinating. This is where we go in really deep with our um, EFT MBA students and, um, and our business clients. Uh, at some point when I hear, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to be killed. I'm afraid uh, something horrible is going to happen to me. Right. I'm all alone. Um, I'm rejected or I'm going to be rejected. Mm -hmm. um, and Everybody I want to disappear. I want to disappear. Okay. All of those. Yeah. I, you know where I take this eventually? I do actually. Back to the womb. Yeah. Yes. So often I ask. Uh, I ask. So, does this fe has this feeling been with you for a forever. long time? And they say, Yeah, it's been with you forever. Then, boom! At some point, I'm, we're going to go using matrix reimprinting going back into the womb and, and finding out what the conception story was. And um, when they when mom or dad found out that you were in existence. So oftentimes it's the it's the, oh my God, this was my fourth child and I didn't want to have another child. It just even that instant that your mom felt that way. The neuro you know, when we go to perinatal health and perinatal psychology, the chemicals and information that's being transmitted into the womb right. transmits feelings and decisions and beliefs that come out. So we have many of that that come from early around birth or infancy right. Right. and occasionally even before. And we start to look at the source of generational trauma as right. being the source of these things like, I don't know why it feels like I'm right. literally going to be ostracized from the whole community. And so that's another source. Yeah. So the fascinating thing for me is here we are as practitioners and not a question that we're out there helping people. Like whatever it is that we're coaching or practicing and, yes. you know, we're focusing on tapping here because that's the EFT MBA program as we work with you. But again, whatever healing art you're doing is you have this thing that you need to deliver that people need to know about. And yet we get in our own way. We stop ourselves from simply delivering our message of, look, I don't want everybody to come. I just want to let you know these are the skills I have. Right. These are who it's best going to serve. And I only want the ones to come to me that are the ones that fit that yeah. match. I'm yeah. not trying to convince people. I'm yeah. not trying to yeah. sell people. No, I just want to create that message that gets out there so the people that need that find it. Absolutely. You, you, you absolutely have to operate in this way. And one of the fascinating lessons that I got really early on in my practice um, from a dear mentor who said, um, the clients that you have that are sort of weighing you down, 
the ones that it's all it takes all of this energy they're not doing their homework they're not they're not they are not engaged as you'd like them to be the every time that you let go of one or say you know i think that we're done here or originally as a consult say i don't think it's a good fit because you get that hit for each one of those that you let go of three more will come in mm -hmm. and i'm like what are you kidding i am like praying for anyone to come and pay me money are you nuts and i love it i would do it for free but i really need money and so i'm gonna charge but then I'm feeling timid about it and then I'm charging and I'm going to take everybody, everybody that walks in or wants to consult with me, they're all good. I can work with all of them. And um, energetically, that doesn't work. And again, what happens when you let go of some of those people is your desperation. Right. You've handled your desperation right. and that just turns on the spigot for flow for more clients and you feeling really good about the clients that you do have and the ones that are there and engaged and um, really love to work with you, man, those are just the, the most wonderful clients who feed you and uplift you and bring you to a higher vibration so that you do attract more, more and more and more. Yeah. And you know, I, I love the comments. It's the, you know, the comment of the fear of the criticism, the comment of yes. the savior complex, of I have to help these people and that, and that yes. passion and motivation. But you know what, what I want to say is when we look, I mean, when we, we're working with practitioners all the time yes. and we're working with, what I want to say is information isn't enough, right? Yes. Knowing that I do that is not enough. Yes. Knowing EFT is not enough to be successful, that right. I have, you know, the personal work comes what is stopping me from just doing this? Right. Right. I'm just talking yeah. to an audience, whoever. We're having fun right now, but it wasn't always like this. Right. I mean, some people know you're an introvert. I know. It's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. But this is just comfortable and easy now, but it wasn't always that way. And that's where the tapping comes in. So with our business students, the key part is yeah. actually doing the personal work so Absolutely. that you can integrate the technology Absolutely. and put on the and but you don't need to do it all and that's a, that's the beauty of this is nowadays um, you can put yourself out there in so many different ways and we encourage you to find one that you really enjoy doing mm -hmm. get rid of the fear so that you can go forward so back to the loop I right? <laughs> go back to the story um, of my my ex who um, would get really angry with me when I asked about email like I was terrified of Technology. I was re but there was something really attractive about it. And so I used EFT and tapping partners and practitioners to get me through fear of technology. And then I started, I, I like to develop my own website. Guess who's actually the tech savvy person in this relationship? <laughs> yes. So um, my point is you can you can say, boy, you know what? The thing about podcasting, I I'm, it's, it's, I'm like curious about it and I think I could do really well, but I'm, I'm really scared. I'm, and all of the, and because I'm afraid to put myself out there, then work on that and learn enough to know what you're going to be asking for, needing, hiring people for. Even if you hire the whole thing out, you have to know what it is that you're going to ask for. I've seen way too many practitioners not know what the heck they were asking for in terms of a website and then um, ended up paying, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars for a website that never brought them any business at all. So you got to know, at least know what you're going to be hiring out and what you're going to be asking for. But also with technology, one of the things that I find is that the fear. So, for example, if people see us out there on Twitter or social media, some of them think we're sitting behind the computer and posting that six times a day uh -huh. and think, oh, I would never want to be behind the computer too, because right. they don't know what they don't know. They don't know that there are computer programs and services that do that for you. Yeah. So there's no way the perception, like your perception is we're doing this much, yeah. we're really doing this much. Right. And so that which we, being so scared that it keeps us stuck and paralyzed, that we don't even know, oh. I should ask. I, I should ask, that. that would make life so much easier. <laughs> And I'm about yeah. easy, right? We're all about the easy button. Um, the other thing about putting yourself out there, especially when it comes to this, is 
got to put yourself out there more than once. Yeah. And so you have a disaster. You have a bad time. You have, you know, I was sharing with our MBA students that, you know, my very first workshop. <laughs> How many people were there, hon? Okay, so my first presentation. <laughs> let's start with that. Okay. My first presentation. I had one person show up. Mm -hmm. Did one you do person. it? And the owner of the store, the metaphysical bookshop where I was speaking, she felt so bad for me that she stayed. Like she was supposed to hand me the keys and leave, and she felt so bad for me she stayed. So I had two people at my first presentation, and I could have said, okay, I, I'm, this is too scary. That's I can't right. do it. I'm done with this. And then, no, I kept at it. And so for yeah. a lot of these things, it's persistence. Sure. And, um, and really, can, persistence also includes keep tapping on those fears that continue to come up. Sure. Because you're going to feel a safe, uh, like you're going to get to a place where this feels comfortable, but holy cow, no, that feels like it's much too big. Mm -hmm. So we, we, I, we went through um, a little practice mostly on Woodby Island, then to more trainings, then holy cow, am I going to write a book? And I'm going to write a book on X. Holy cow. So another whole layer and lots and lots of tapping to get by yeah. that. Then what? Then a okay, movie. Then that comfort zone, right? Like we could have just <laughs> stayed right there. Right. Then somebody yeah. had this silly version to like create a tapping movie. Yes. Because we knew all about doing that. Yes. Right? And had so. Had to do some tapping on it, that. Yeah, for sure. And running a summit and all of those things that we've done. Um, and I feel like we've done those things in part because we love to see what what is that what it is that um, what are the steps to doing those things so that we can impart it on our to teach time. it yeah to teach it because we don't teach anything students. that we haven't done ourselves. absolutely we have to walk the talk otherwise that would be inauthentic yeah and you know do you hit a comfort zone where you stop getting nervous or it's for me, it's always like this edge of yeah like there's a calling there's a pull there's an excitement and there's an oh shit. Yes. Right? There's like, it's kind of <laughs> dancing between the two of those all the yes. time. But it keeps life really fun and interesting and never boring. Well, right? yeah, and you have a wonderful tool for that. Um, seriously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but what I find with many practitioners is they put themselves last. They won't commit to regular tapping. And that's why in the MBA, have either yeah. you're tapping with me or with Craig yep. every month. And you get an accountability partner so that you're swapping sessions huge. as much as possible sure. um, most of the time on a weekly basis. And you're not stuck with the same person. We rotate that every month. Because you can find, you can look up YouTube, you know, you can find all yeah. the information in the world about marketing funnels and, and social media advertising and SEO. You know, there's articles and resources everywhere. Yes. What I find is that people get that information and it doesn't integrated because of all the emotional fears and doubts and, and all of these out there. Yeah. So the combination of taking in a piece of information about yeah. how to market yourself, helping yeah. with it, working with it, integrating it, taking the next chunk, and that combination I wouldn't trade for the world. I can't imagine not having it that way. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 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 So anyway. if you're interested and you want to launch or relaunch your, your EFT your tapping practice, um, and you want to know more about our program, just go visit www eftmba.com stands for marketing and business mm -hmm. academy and i do a free consult with everybody that you fill out an application because yeah. we don't take everybody it's a small group and we want to make sure that it's a win-win for everybody so, yeah and we'll yeah. be starting again it's a year-long program we Good open night. our doors once a year so yeah. thank you thank all you for and joining if you have us. other ideas of what you'd like to see on these uh yeah we're trying to do them weekly for you yep okay let us know and just leave us a comment all Thanks. right thank Thanks, you have a great day.